In this video, what we're going to look at is a technique of integration by substitution. Now, when we are looking at normal integration for a normal function, what we've been looking at doing is taking each term and writing it as a sum of individual terms so that we can integrate these one by one. However, integration by substitution allows us to do much more complex equations and it allows us to do equations involving, for example, brackets and powers at a much quicker pace. Now, let's imagine we're going to take a function and we're going to write it in this format here. So f of x equals ax to the n plus bx to the n minus 1 plus cx to the n minus 2 and so on. We can then individually integrate each term one by one. So as I mentioned before, so if I wanted to integrate, for example, this function here, what I'd have to do is multiply out this first bracket, write everything as a term with a power, and then integrate each term individually. So I'd take it and I'd rewrite it as the integral, and then when I multiply out this bracket here, of 4x to the power of 6 plus 4x cubed plus 1 plus, and then the square root of x, we'd write as x to the power of a half, dx, so I know it's with respect to x. I then integrate each term individually. So I'd end up with 4x to the power of 7 over 7 plus 4x to the power of 4 over 4 <coughs> plus x plus x to the power of 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 and then don't forget your plus c, your constant of integration. And at this stage, I'd simplify it, and I'd make sure I wrote it in the simplest terms. So I'd write 4x to the power of 7 over 7. This term here would simplify to plus x to the power of 4. Then got plus x. Then end up getting plus 2 thirds x to the power of 3 over 2. Well, I could write that as square root of x, all cubed, <coughs> plus c. So there we go, multiplied out the brackets, wrote each thing individually, and then integrated term by term. However, they're not always that simple and straightforward. Let's imagine we have something written in this format, slightly more complex, and we're looking to develop a way to integrate it without having to multiply out the bracket. Now, it is worth noting, I could do that in this one. I could multiply out the bracket and perform that technique. However, it's going to take a bit more time. What we're going to do is we're going to look at using a substitution and writing it in terms of a different variable in order to be able to do that. So what you're going to do is we're going to introduce a variable u. Now we're going to substitute in u for a part of this equation here such that we can then get a much more simple equation which we are able to integrate. Now what to do is take u and make it equivalent to the highest powered term within the equation. And in this case, that's this bit here in the bracket. So u equals 2x cubed. However, notice there is a plus 1. What to do is essentially we want to cordon off this entire bracket and write the entire thing as one variable. So your first step would be to set u equal to 2x cubed plus 1. What I'm then going to do is differentiate this, because if I calculate du by dx, <clears throat> what I end up getting is 6x squared. Now, in order to keep it written using the new variable we've introduced, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this and make du the subject of the formula. So what I can then say is that du equals 6x squared dx. Now, if you look at the original equation, if I've substituted u in for this, I've got an x squared dx outside the bracket. Now, that's written in the original variable, but we're trying to substitute to get rid of that. However, if you look at this, I've got du equals 6x squared dx. This part here is the equivalent of that x squared dx. So if I take the 6 across and I say that 1 sixth du equals x squared dx, what I can now do is substitute this in for the x squared dx to get rid of that original variable x and give myself a much simpler integral. 
So I'd then be able to take this and write it as the integral. Well, there's u there, so that's now going to be u squared times one sixth du because I've substituted one sixth du for the x squared dx part there. So that's going to give me one sixth times the integral of u squared du. Now I don't know about you, but integrating u squared is a heck of a lot more straightforward to me than it would be to integrate this to begin with. So if I integrate that, I get 1 sixth times u cubed over 3 plus c, my constant of integration. Now technically it is plus a sixth c, but since we don't know what that c is in terms of being a constant, just amalgamate the whole thing into 1. So now that I've integrated it, what I'll end up with is u cubed over 18 plus c. So there you go, that's my integral. However, that's my integral in terms of u. Remember, we want it written in terms of x, our original variable. So at this point, since I know what u is, I substitute back in here. And I can then write that as 2x cubed plus 1 all cubed over 18 plus c. So now I've integrated the function in terms of the original variable. What I can do then is if I take this and I differentiate it, calculate the differential of the whole thing, what I'll end up getting is I'll end up getting back to the original question. So if I reverse the process, I'll get back to the original process. It's the way that we can check our working. Using this technique, what we're able to do is make a much more complex function easier and make it more simple and straightforward to integrate. However, there's a couple of key points and key rules we need to make sure we follow. First thing is we always look for the antiderivative, i.e. the function that you differentiate to make it as easy as possible to substitute in. So for that previous one, <clears throat> I chose 2x cubed plus 1 over the x squared. The reason being, if I differentiate 2x cubed, what I'll end up getting is 6x squared. So I've written it in terms of the power of the other one. Yeah, I've got an extra constant, but I've got my powers equivalent. So I can then take that and manipulate it slightly easier. Second key point, try and take as much as possible to simplify as quickly and easily as you can. So for example, using constants. So as I discussed previously, originally I could have taken out 2x cubed. However, if I took out the 2x cubed plus 1, I could rewrite that entire section using u. So it just makes it a lot easier and quicker for me to do. And then the last thing is be sure to change back into the original variable and use any conditions that we might have to get rid of any constant of integration. So that last step, substituting back in for u to write it in terms of the x, the original variable for my equation. And at that stage, that's when we can get a constant of integration if we have any conditions to calculate it. I'm going to show you a couple more examples of this and how it can be outworked. So let's imagine I want to calculate the integral of 3x, bracket 2x squared, minus 1 to the power 4dx. Again, we're going to use substitution for this. What we do is we look for the antiderivative, i.e. the highest power that's available to us within our equation. So here, looking at that, I know the highest power is going to be the x squared. So what I'm going to do is select my substitution, u equals, based on that, and I'm going to state that u equals 2x squared. However, if I take the minus 1 as well, I turn this entire bracket into u to the power of 4, and it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to take that with it too. So I've got 2x squared minus 1 for my u. What I then do is I calculate the u by dx. So if I calculate the u by dx, what I know is that's the equivalent of 4x. And I can rewrite it, so I've got du equals 4x dx. Now, I've got a 3 here, but if I quite simply take this and write it as a quarter du equals x dx, I'm able to get rid of this part and this part here. Yes, I'll still have a 3, but that 3 is merely a constant. Because it's a constant, it's not going to have a massive overall effect on the equation that we're looking at, so we can just leave it in. Now, using this information, what I'm able to do is rewrite it 
is the integral of 3 times this bit here, which is now u, to the power of 4, times my x dx. But instead of that, I'm going to use this substitution here, times a quarter du. Now, if I rewrite that a little bit more straightforward, gather my constants together and put them outside, what I'll end up getting is 3 quarters times the integral of u to the power of 4 du. Now, that again looks a lot more straightforward to integrate than it previously did. If I then integrate that, what I end up getting is 3 quarters times u to the power of 5 over 5 plus my constant of integration, c. I can then simplify this bit at the front and substitute back in for u, so take this and stick it back into there, and what I'll end up getting is 3 over 20 times the u to the power of 5, put back in for u, times 2x squared minus 1 to the power of 5, plus my constant, c. So there we go, we've done it that way. What we've done, again, followed those steps. We've got rid of the more complex equation, substituted in for that, put it in terms of another variable, but then substituted back again at the end. And this can apply for anything, not just powers, but trig functions as well. Let's imagine I want to calculate the integral of cos x sine to the power of 5 dx. Now, one like this, I'm going to give you a hint. Look for whatever trig function has the highest power and substitute in for that. So I know that sine to the power of 5 has the higher power than cos. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to pick that u equals sine x. Now do not take the 5 with it because I know that the derivative du by dx of sine x is equal to cos x. So I can rewrite it that du is equal to cos x dx. And what that lets me say is that fine, if I've got u sine x, that's going to give me u to the power of 5. And I know that I've got cos x dx, that will get rid of the cos x dx there. So I can take that and rewrite my entire integral as the integral of u to the power of 5 du. Now again, that looks a lot more straightforward and simple to integrate than what we initially had written there. So what I can now do is just integrate that the same way, and again, as we've done up to this point, substitute back in. So if I integrate that, what I end up getting is 1 sixth u to the power of 6 plus c, substitute back in for u, and I get 1 over 6 sine to the power of 6x plus c. There you go. We've integrated fairly straightforwardly. Now that there, we could use other techniques, don't get me wrong, but for a, an equation like that, that is still slightly more complex, but we're able to break it down into easier terms, this would be the technique to choose. Just remember the key points that we said earlier about how to choose what you're substituting in for, and then how to proceed beyond that.